In today's video, I want to give you guys my best tips on how you can break through a weight loss stall in 2024 on the carnivore diet. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alice and my husband and I have lost over 90 pounds together. We have coached and worked with dozens of people to help them lose weight on a carnivore diet, including Anita, AKA the ketogenic woman. If you haven't seen our live stream with her where she talks about her experience and results with our coaching, I will leave a link up top right here for you to check out. So weight loss plateaus and stalls. One one of the most frustrating experiences that you can go through when you're trying to lose weight. I have been there myself. I completely understand how it feels like. You put in all of this effort sticking with the diet and the scale just doesn't move. It is so frustrating. Now the length of your stall and how quickly you can break through it will be determined by certain actions you do or don't take. So I will go through some of those actions in today's video, particularly if you are looking to lose weight on the carnivore diet. The first tip I have is to reevaluate or reconsider your approach. Now, if you are currently stalled and the scale has not been moving for you for the past couple of weeks, then here are some of the things that you can try. Here is the summary of some of the most popular approaches on carnivore. The first approach and one of the most popular approaches is high fat carnivore, where 80% of your intake comes from dietary fat. The second approach is high protein carnivore, which is personally what myself and my husband do, where 40% of your intake comes from protein. There is also BBB which is more of an eating menu and macronutrient allocation is not the top priority. BBBE basically means you are focused on eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And then there's the lion diet where you only consume anything with four stomachs. So that includes things like beef, bison, goat, venison, anything with four stomachs. Macronutrient allocation isn't necessarily the most important thing. It's just focused on eating those specific foods and those specific foods only. The lion diet is a great diet for a strict elimination or if you're looking to heal and address an autoimmune condition that you may have. And then there's also something like the animal-based diet or the meat and fruit diet where carb intake is moderate to high. And then lastly, there is the ketovore or keto carnivore approach, which means that the focus is just on being low carb in general. And you generally wanna limit your carb intake to no more than 20 grams of carbs a day. On the keto carnivore diet, most of your nutrition will come from meat and animal-based products, but it does allow for some flexibility with recipes, uh, small amounts of vegetables, nuts, and uh, other low carb foods. Now, as you can tell, there are just so many different approaches out there. And I think part of this keto carnivore lifestyle or low carb lifestyle in general is that you really want to try different approaches and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. It's kind of like troubleshooting to get the best results. If one of these approaches is not working for you, then you can try to change the foods up to see if another one is better for you. The second tip that I have if you are in a stall is to track your foods. I know nobody loves the idea of logging and weighing their foods. It can definitely seem tedious and daunting. I think that logging and weighing your foods is just a great tool to help you build awareness of your own subconscious eating habits. Because a lot of our eating habits are habitual and unconscious. So whether you are a boredom eater, a stress eater, an emotional eater, a binge eater, a social eater, a lot of people think that they're doing a certain approach, but once they actually start logging and tracking their foods, they realize that they're not 100% eating the way that they thought that they were. Now, there's also the intuitive eating approach, and a lot of people can lose weight eating intuitively on carnivore, where again, macronutrient allocation is not the top priority, and you're basically just eating until you're full or you're satiated. Now, I would say that if you have seen success eating intuitively and you're losing weight doing carnivore, then your approach doesn't need to be changed, right? We don't need to fix what isn't broken. But if you're watching this today, then you're probably stuck in a plateau. And if you are stuck, then again, tracking and logging your food to see what you're currently doing, what fat to protein ratio you're currently eating. Maybe you're eating more trigger foods than you thought. Maybe you're eating more pork rinds than you thought. Tracking can really help you identify whether there are any specific foods in your diet that are causing you to be stuck. It's very similar to tracking your sleep, like with an aura ring or tracking your steps with a Fitbit or your Apple watch. And when you track, it also trains your subconscious to be more aware aware of what you're doing, right? So when you track your steps, you're more likely to reach 5,000 steps a day, 10,000 steps a day. And when you track your sleep, you're much more likely to adopt good sleeping habits. Likewise, when you track your macros and when you log all of your meals, you're much more likely to be conscious of your own eating habits. So again, use tracking as a tool to help you understand where you are, what needs to be changed, and then you can make tweaks and adjustments from there to help you push past your plateau. Now, if you're watching this today and you're on the carnivore diet for weight loss, we do have a couple of new live masterclasses that we are hosting in January, 2024 
called the four step formula for you to accelerate your weight loss on carnivore, where we go over the four steps that you need to take to figure out your fat amount, your protein amount, your fat to protein ratio to help you lose and accelerate that weight loss that you're looking for. By doing so, you'll be able to come up with your own carnivore strategy to help you push past any stucks or plateaus on the carnivore diet. Our masterclasses do fill up and they're very high in demand, so make sure you register as soon as possible to secure your spot. There is also a live Q&A session at the end of the masterclass where we can hang out and chat and answer any questions that you have about the carnivore diet. I will leave all registration links down in the description below, so make sure you check it out if you are interested. The next tip I have if you're stuck in a plateau on the carnivore diet is to adjust your fat to protein ratio. Now, a lot of people get really frustrated when they hit a stall on carnivore and they don't know what to do because they feel like they've been really strict with a diet, eating just beef or just eating a couple of foods and it's been a month or two months and they're just not losing the weight. And this goes back to my original point of tracking, but also tracking to understand what fat to protein ratio you're currently eating. And then you wanna try adjusting it up or down to see whether that helps. Another tip that I have is to look into the differences of the different cuts of meat and the fat to protein ratios associated with each meat. For example, if you are doing BBBE, the question you should be asking is how much bacon are you eating? Because bacon can skew fat to protein ratio dramatically. And what cuts of beef are you eating? Because there are a lot of different fat to protein ratios with beef. BBBE can be 10 ounces of beef brisket with six ounces of pork belly and five eggs. It can also be two eggs and an eight ounce strip loin steak and four strips of bacon, right? Those have two different fat to protein ratios. Even though the focus of BBBE isn't necessarily macronutrient allocation, if you are stalled, then this is something that I would suggest you look into investigating and see if you can tweak or manipulate small things to see whether that helps you push past your plateau. A lot of people will lose weight initially on carnivore eating intuitively without needing to worry about the macros. Based on our own experience with carnivore and just working with so many different people now, we do see that people eventually hit a stall eating intuitively. Now, adjusting your fat amount and protein amount does require you to be a little bit more analytical. You do have to dig into the numbers a little bit more. If you find this to be a tedious process and you don't like tracking, then you may want to to consider some more targeted guidance such as looking into working with a coach. The last tip I have is about movement and exercise. So if you're currently in a stall and you wanna push past your plateau, but you would classify your exercise level to be sedentary, then that's something that you can look into changing up immediately. Now, this does not mean you need to spend hours and hours at the gym like you see people doing on social media. Getting into shape actually only takes 30 minutes a day consistently. We all have 30 minutes a day. Even the most important person in the world has 30 minutes a day. The key here is consistency and allowing enough momentum to build up over time so you can see results. Another tip that I have about exercise is a bit of a mindset one, but try reframing exercise in a way that makes it enjoyable and non-negotiable and something that really benefits and makes you happy in life. Because if you see exercise as this dreadful thing that you absolutely hate that you have to do to lose weight, then it's really never going to work. You're never gonna be motivated to do it because nobody is motivated to do something that they dread. Nobody is motivated to do things that they hate. Whereas if you train yourself to love it, to enjoy it, to see it as a hobby, as an activity that enriches your life, then you're much more likely to adopt it as a permanent lifestyle. Another tip that I have with exercise for those of you who are active is make sure you're not over exercising or doing excessive hit and cardio. I think doing excessive cardio and excessive hit can really play tricks on your hunger hormones. Having a proper routine for exercise is very important. And if you are over exercising, then it can definitely create some of that stress hormone, which is cortisol in our bodies. And we all know that cortisol can make us hold on to fat. Our recommendation is strength training and make sure you do enough strength training to build lean muscle mass. Cardio is great for the heart. Zone five training can increase your lifespan and it can increase your VO2 max. But if your goal is weight loss, just be cautious that you're not falling into that exercise trap of over-exercising and then overeating to compensate and then over-exercising and then it feels like you can never get off of that hamster wheel. If you are always doing HIIT, cardio, zone five training, I recommend trying to switch things up and you can consider doing some zone two training. You can also consider prioritizing non-exercise activity thermogenesis, such as walking. It's the energy expended on things like walking, typing, fidgeting, any sort of movement 
movement that isn't active physical exercise. So I highly recommend 5,000 steps a day if you can and working your way up to 10,000 as the gold standard. Getting a walking desk or a treadmill can really help with that. Now, if you like this video today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you are on the carnivore diet for weight loss, then make sure you register for one of our free masterclass sessions happening in January. They will be hosted on January 1st, 7th and 14th. Again, in this masterclass, we go over all the steps that you need to take to come up with your own carnivore strategy so that you can lose weight and accelerate your weight loss, push past any plateaus that you're experiencing on the carnivore diet so that you can make 2024 your best year ever. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Until next time.